The Sailor Sea Marine Survival Project showed that several factors were critical in controlling marine survival of juvenile salmon and steelhead. For juvenile Chinook and Coho, we learned that climate change and changes in nutrient inputs have altered the timing, quality, and quantity of food available for them to eat in marine waters. It turns out zooplankton are really important. Zooplankton are these animals that not many people get to see or even hear about. And they're just so important at the base of the food chain to everything else, all the way up to orcas. For this net, we are only towing in the upper 30 meters because that's where we think that juvenile salmon are feeding during the day. Our lab has been involved in the Salish Sea Marine Survival Project since 2014. For the zooplankton monitoring project, we have groups all around Puget Sound, down from South Sound, all the way up to the San Juan Islands, and they collect zooplankton for us about every two weeks. We actually don't know a lot about the zooplankton in Puget Sound, and this is the largest scale zooplankton monitoring project that's ever happened here. The research and results coming out of the Salish Sea Marine Survival Project help us understand these ecosystem processes as they happened in the past and as they're happening today. The long-term monitoring programs like the zooplankton monitoring program, they allow us to collect data and begin to model future impacts to predict what might happen under scenarios of increased climate change or human development. When the Marine Survival Project started, we really didn't know which of all these different factors that could impact salmon could have been responsible for the decrease in survival. You have to consider the whole system and you have to consider all the different impacts that are happening on the system at the same time. And ecosystem models like Atlantis let us do that. Atlantis is just the framework. And it's a framework that simulates marine ecosystems from bacteria, through currents, nutrients, all the way up to orcas and fisheries. We try to use as much field data so that we have the best possible representation of the system. We're able to simulate all sorts of human impacts on the system. We can plug in future temperatures and see how they impact different organisms and processes in the system. People have generated most of these problems. As we sit here on the West Coast, the fires all around us and the heat on them we have, there's no question that climate change is rearing its ugly head. It's here. It's going to continue to cause problems. The damage that we've done and the habitat that we've lost is very likely to compound the effects of climate change on salmon. So I think it becomes increasingly important to actually execute on some of the things that we know we need to do. Launching the new zooplankton monitoring program, development of the Atlantis ecosystem model, the International Partnership with Pacific Salmon Foundation all demonstrate innovative thinking that's now driving recovery efforts throughout the region. Recognizing the increasing urgency to act in the face of climate change, it's critical we drive the results from the Salish Sea Marine Survival Project into action. With over 60 organizations and over 200 researchers involved, the Salish Sea Marine Survival Project built lasting partnerships that will deeply impact the future of salmon recovery. With the help of all of our supporters, we were able to complete this incredible project. With continued support, we can put these findings to work and bring our salmon and steelhead back for future generations.